right, so we are going to start with step one, um, which is starting with the zippers. So you want to, we're making a small size, and you want to cut each of your zippers to exactly seven inches in length. Um, I use zipper tape, and you want to make sure that you're using number five, um, or I think number 4.5 is the same, that your zipper tape is one and one quarter inch wide this way. Um, so since I use zipper tape, I add the slides to it, or zipper pulls. So, I don't have any fancy tools. There's uh, some kind of thing that you can get that hooks right onto your table to put the poles on, and I don't, I don't have one, but I have never had an issue putting them on like this. I will now, since I just said that. And this, um, these zipper poles and zipper tape is from So Whatever, um, which I think is SoWhatever.com. No, MoreMeKnow.com. Her Facebook group is So Whatever. So I think it's MoreMeKnow.com is where I got these. Um, I can link that down below the video. Okay, so I have both of my zipper poles on and they're even. So you want to start with your zippers and zipper tabs. So you will take um, two exterior zipper tabs and two lining zipper tabs. Place the exterior right side down um, with your zipper up. The exterior tab is on top, right side down. And then place your lining tab right side up. So the right sides of each are facing the zipper. And they're lined up with the short edge. You'll pin those in place or clip them. And then we're going to sew together the end using a half inch seam allowance. And I use a shorter stitch length um, for sewing the pieces together and then a longer stitch length when I'm top stitching anything. So right now I'm using a stitch length of three. Um, I think anywhere like two, two and a half to three is good for regular sewing. And then for top stitching, I'll use like a four or five length. So let me go ahead and sew the tabs to the other side now as well. And you just have the right side of each tab facing the zipper. The exterior tab is facing the right side of the zipper. The lining tab is facing the wrong side of the zipper. And the foot that I use on my sewing machine is called a narrow zipper foot. And I pretty much use this for everything. Um, so I did actually find one at one point for a domestic machine as well, um, and I like that also. But it's helpful to not have to switch between feet too much um, when you attach zippers and things if you don't need to. So now we're going to press the tabs away from the zipper, wrong sides together. So they'll be like this, let me press that. We are not top stitching these at this point in time. I'm going to repeat that same process with my other zipper. So I have the exterior tab right side down against the right side of the zipper. And I'm just going to pin both sides on this one at the same time. And then I have the right side of the lining tab toward the wrong side of the zipper. And 
I'm going to use a one half inch seam allowance. And I was back stitch at the beginning and ending of sewing a line of stitching. And my top thread's messy, so I can fix that. the other end. Again, we don't trim these seam allowances down on the zipper and we do not top stitch the zipper. I think if you really wanted to, you could maybe top stitch just through the exterior and the zipper. Um, yeah, I think it's better not to though. Okay, so let me press both of these tabs wrong sides together away from the zipper. Okay, so now both of the zippers are completed. Now we are going to take the exterior flap front, which is this piece. I'm going to, the interfacing's hanging off the edge here a little bit, so I'm just going to trim that. Okay, so now we want, um, one of my testers pointed out, and I'll just throw this out there, if you are left-handed and you like to carry your clutch on your other hand, you may want to cut these pieces out opposite. So you would cut with the pattern piece right side down on the exterior and right side up on the lining so that your flap and your zipper and everything goes the opposite way. Um, that's personal preference. I'm right-handed, so I just wrote the pattern that way, but everything could be flipped and go the other way if you choose. So I'm going to take my one of my zippers, place it right side down. I just try to center it along the um, curved edge. So really, if you wanted to, you could kind of find the center of the zipper there. And then I'll find the center of this curved line. but it really isn't that important that it's perfectly centered. Um, just eyeball it. So I'm going to clip along the zipper portion first with the exterior flap front. Okay, and then I'm going to fold the lining tab back out of the way and I'm going to clip the exterior tab to the exterior flap front as well. Alright, so now to sew this on, I'm going to sew through the exterior tab and the exterior tab front using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm going to sew only to that seam where the zipper tabs are attached to the zipper. And then make sure when you get to that point, you can back stitch. Okay, and I will trim those threads, fold the exterior tab, or I'm sorry, the lining tab. back down and now we'll sew only through the zipper and the exterior flap front. Again, two eight, or 3 8 inch seam allowance, do not sew through your lining tab. So I just slowly put my needle down to make sure it starts right after that tab. Just stitch a few stitches and then back stitch a couple. Again, don't go through that lining tab. 3 8 inch seam allowance along the length of the zipper only. And move the zipper pull out of the way when you get to that. And I'm sewing 
only to the beginning of the next tab. trim those threads you'll notice um, watching me so I trim all of my threads as I go and I just find that it makes it a lot easier when you get to the end and you don't have threads hanging everywhere to clip off and possibly miss some of them okay and I also I'm sewing through the seam allowance um, from the zipper at this point too so I start right where that stitching is attaching the zipper to the zipper tab, 3 8 inch seam allowance, and I'm just sewing to the edge of the front flap, flap front, and you will notice the um, zipper with tabs attached is a little bit longer than the length of the flap, and that's perfectly fine, that's how it should be, um, and that's just because it, with it being at an angle it's easier that way. All right, so now we will repeat that process. Put the lining flap right side down. And I'm going to clip the tabs to the lining flap. And I'm just making sure that that lining flap is matched up all the way around with my exterior flap. And I've clipped only the tabs and then I'm going to clip the length of the zipper between. And I'm going from the side that you can already see my stitching on from the exterior. And first, I find this easier. Um, you can start with the tabs if you choose. I like to sew along the zipper first when I do this part for some reason. So just make sure that you're not sewing through the tabs. Start right next to the tabs and just sew over the existing stitching from attaching the zipper to the exterior. Move the zipper pull out of the way. And this is a 3 8 inch seam allowance again. Back stitch when you reach the other zipper tab. These are my snips that I got from Havel Sewing. Um, they are awesome. They come with a lanyard so you can wear them around your neck and you don't lose them. I hang it from um, like the thread holder on my sewing machine so they're always right here where I need them because trust me I lose everything. Okay and now I'm just sewing the tab to the lining flap front. And you go right up to where the stitching was to attach the tab to the zipper and make sure you back stitch. That part can be a little bit hard because the zipper is in there, so just um, bend it back and you can lift your foot up on the sewing machine if you need to to be able to stitch it. And this part's the same, see it's a little hard to fold back with the zipper in there. but. And that's why I sew along the zipper first, so that way when I'm folding this back, I'm not shifting anything. Okay, and I'm sewing along the tab and the lining flap only. step four. So now step number five, we are going to press the lining and exterior flap front away from the zipper and wrong sides together. So we're not trimming anything yet. Um, so I'll press this away from the zipper and then press the lining away from the zipper and they will be wrong sides together. All right, so those are pressed wrong sides together. And now I'm going to top stitch along the zipper portion only and do not extend down where the flaps or the tabs are. So I'm going to use a stitch length of four and I'm going to place this so that the needle lines up with exactly the beginning of that tab. I'll just do 
a couple stitches and then back stitch and I try to be neat and stay in the same holes because this is right on the front side of your bag. zipper pull out of the way I think and then I'm going to stop when my needle reaches the beginning of the next tab and then just back stitch a few stitches so just since this is on the front of your bag you want to try to be neat um, with the back stitching oh that's so pretty I love this fabric. Okay, so we are going to put this aside for now. And we need to make our connector. So what I did, because I already pressed this, um, your connector is, if you're making a small bag, your connector is... Um, Nine and a half inches, I think. No, nope, nine and three quarter inches by one inch. So you will fold the tab in half, wrong sides together, open it up, and then press each of the long raw edges into the crease that you created in the center. And then fold each of these tabs back one and a half inches. So what I how I do that, I measure in if you double the length that you need to fold it. So I measure in three inches, I make a mark, and then I fold this to that three inch mark. So then that's one and a half inches um, that's folded back. Let me pull these little threads out of there. All right, and we will want to slip our D rings. Okay. Slip the D rings onto these fold into the folds, and I'm going to place a pin in here just to hold it and then another one on the other end and these are one half inch D rings so once you fold that um, it will be one half inch wide and it's important to use the correct um, size so that the clutch folds down properly if you make the connector wider, um, then you have to make some other parts wider as well, um, like the connector stabilizer, or connector support, which I did not cut, actually. Um, so let me cut that real quick. Here, I have both ends of this connector are pinned. Okay, let me get my connect. Okay, so here's my connector support. And we want to fuse that half an inch up from the straight side um, and centered on the back of this. So let me just mark my half inch. And I have this disappearing ink marker that I don't know if it really disappears, so hopefully it will. If not, this is on the wrong side, but the next line is not going to be on the wrong side. So let me fuse this in place. Okay, so that is on the back. And now on the right side, we want to measure three quarters of an inch up from the bottom straight edge and centered and we're going to make I'm going to draw a line and really the let's see how long does this end up being when it's folded it's six about six and three quarters of an inch long so I'm just going to make this line about six inches long. 
and then I'll make sure it's centered. The center is right there. Now we'll place this on here, matching the line. If you want to find the center, just fold this in half evenly and pinch. And then you can line that fold up where you just pinched it with the center mark. Let's grab my pins. And this marker does seem to really disappear because it seems like it already is. So work fast if you're using a disappearing ink. Okay, so everything is pinned in place, and now we are going to sew this on. Um, I use a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. I'm just going to start along the bottom. And you can pull the pins out as you go if they're in your way. All right, when you get down to your first connector, just sew as close as you can to the connector turn to sew beneath it. I like to back stitch here for just a little added security and then you'll turn and sew along the other side again using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and I can pull those pins out now. Oh don't do not lift it up. Do not lift up your presser foot with the needle in the okay that was nice with the needle in the up position. The ball just pulled right off that pin and the pin stayed in there, so. Okay, that one worked. Maybe it's time for new pins. And then when you get back to where you started sewing, just back stitch again. All right, I'll trim all of my threads. And the entire connector should be sewn to the stabilizer. And now let me pull this pin out that broke. So now we're going to sew this to the zipper that's attached to the flap front. So we'll place the exterior, the exterior piece right sides together with the exterior that's attached to the zipper. And we're going to use the same method. So I'm, I'm placing this on here so that the sides are matched up. The sides of both exteriors match. And that's where you, how you know you have the placement right. So I'm going to clip that in place to 
one exterior tab and that to the lining tab. And then along the zipper. Okay, let me. So I'm going to start sewing with a three eighths inch seam allowance again, sewing the exterior exterior zipper tab only to the exterior flap back back stitch when you reach the stitching where the tabs are attached to the zipper okay fold the lining tab down and then start sewing only where the zipper is. Do not sew through the lining tab. I'm sewing only to where the lining zipper tab is. Do not sew through the lining zipper tab. Back stitch. Turn my threads. And then fold the lining tab back out of the way. And sew through the exterior zipper tab. Not using that seam allowance though. Using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Sew through the exterior zipper tab and the exterior back flap only. Flap back. I need to call them flap back, back flap. If you notice when you watch my videos, I call the pattern pieces by the wrong name all the time. So I apologize for that. Hopefully you can tell what I'm doing by the way it looks, or I correct myself. Okay, and now we need to attach the back lining flap. Oh, one other thing that I actually just skipped. We needed to install the snap. So, um, generally you would do that before you sew it to the zipper, but I didn't. So, here's your um, snap placement. I'm going to poke a little hole in there with something. I'll use this little screwdriver. So the center is what you want to mark. So I'm going to line this up and mark the center of your snap placement on the exterior back flap. Exterior flap back. Um, you want the male half of your snap, which is the side that has the part that sticks out. I like to use extra thin snaps. Um, they just lay flatter. I usually just order them from whoever has them cheapest on Etsy. They're pretty much available anywhere. These are 18 millimeter thin snaps. All right, now you'll take your seam ripper and just cut along each of the marks you made. If you wish to, you can place some glue or fray check along those cuts. You can also place an extra piece of stabilizer on the back. Um, so, the firm stabilizer that you used for the connector stabilizer. You can cut a square of that out and cut holes in it and place that, fuse that to the back of your fabric before installing the snap. 
Um, I like to install my, I usually put the prongs out just because it's less bulky that way. Um, I know that people have preference about that or have a reason why one way is better than the other. So if you have a personal preference, go ahead by all means and do it which way you choose to do it. Okay, so now we want to install or put, put the lining flap back in place and I'm going to clip that to the lining tabs and the zipper only. Well, the zipper has the everything else attached to it, so along the zipper you sew through the lining and the exterior. But for the tabs, you're only sewing through the lining tabs. So again, I'm going to sew along the length of the zipper first. So start where your tabs are attached. Do a few stitches. Oh my goodness, what happened? I'm having a bobbin malfunction here. what happened but I'll just trim all that off okay so Back to this, we will start right where the zipper is attached, do a few stitches, and back stitch. Do not stitch through the tabs. I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just sewing right over the existing stitching that's here. I move the zipper out of my way as I get to it, and then when I approach the other tabs, I'll back stitch there as well. Now fold the zipper back and the exterior tab and sew together through um, the lining tab and the lining flap back only and back stitch when you approach the zipper. And then repeat that on the other side. Okay, so step number nine. Now we're going to press the exterior flap back and the lining flap back away from the zipper and wrong sides together. Okay, so right now this is what you should have, um, both exteriors, both linings, and none of the tabs, this is all not sewn together. So I'm going to increase my stitch length again to four, and I'm going to top stitch just along the side of the zipper. And again, remember you need to back stitch a few stitches at the beginning, so just um, take your time so that it's neat back stitching, since it's gonna show right on the front of your bag. right to the other tab. So as soon as you reach each tab is when you stop sewing and backstitch. Do 
trim your seams neatly. Okay. So now, this will, we're going to complete the assembly of the front flap. Flap. The flap. Just the flap. Not the front flap. Um, I'm unzipping my zipper halfway so that it's not in the way. You want to, and fold, fold the D-rings in also so they're not in the way. Bring the exteriors only right sides together. Here, maybe it's easier to see from that side. So you're folding the flap back is folded at that bottom. And the exteriors are right sides together and all of the lining pieces are folded back. And you want to pin, clip, whatever, right along the edges. And you'll trim the zipper tabs off after this, so. I'm using a one half inch seam allowance from the edge of the flap, not the tab. You can trim that off before you sew if it makes it easier for you. Back stitch. And here you should be sewing right next to that stabilizer piece, but not through it. Okay, and then I'll repeat that on the other side. Holding the lining back out of the way. Neat, match the sides. One half inch seam allowance. All of the lining pieces are folded back out of the way. sure that the lining is all folded out of the way I'm going to trim my seam allowance and I trim it down to about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching I want to make sure that my corners are nice and pointy when I turn this right side out so I will cut at a diagonal the extra off the corner right there Just make sure that you don't trim through your stitching. Okay, and then we will repeat that process for the lining. So we'll bring the lining flap front and flap back, right sides together. Pin together, clip together along the sides only. easier to do this side first. I'm just going to clip everything first before I sew it. It's easier to have it all laying flat. Okay. Fold the exterior out of the way. And again, we'll use our one half inch seam allowance. You may find it beneficial to use a slightly larger seam allowance um, towards the folded edge so that the lining fits inside of the exterior easier. 
and just make sure that you fold the exterior back out of the way. And then again, trim these seam allowances down. Just be careful that you're not cutting through your exterior at all. to turn the slap right side out and press it well. Um, the zipper is not right on the edge. It is going to be on the front of the exterior flap. So I'm just kind of tucking the lining inside of the exterior. like that. If you use um, a chopstick or some sort of a uh, tool to really push the corners out so that you have a nice crisp corner. And then when you press this, just make sure you really press that bottom edge well. Okay, so I think I'll get that pressed. The flap can be video one. Um, this will all lay flat once I iron it. But if you find that it seems like the lining is too big, that's you could sew using a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the lining pieces from the bottom and just make sure you come back to one half inch at the top. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do the main body in video number two.